Well, welcome back to another Photo Fridays. And this week I am about, I don't know, quarter of a mile away from where we shot last week, i.e. very local again. Really enjoying shooting local. And as I said last week, it's just a, a fabulous habit to get into because you can obviously just pop out as and when. Um, so it's a couple of hours before sunset and I've come down to a little area that I have kind of jokingly dubbed We Elgol. Now I'm sure you've heard of Elgol. Interesting fact, or maybe not so interesting, I've never been. Now why do I call this We Elgol? Well firstly, it might not be anything like it because of course I've never been there. But just all of the sort of textures and shapes and sort of how the rocks look. Um, it just reminds me of some of the images that I've seen from Elgol. So I like to call this We Elgol. And of course, as Irish like to use the term We a lot. It's about three hours before high tide. It's not going to be a hugely high tide. We're probably up to where my feet are. Um, but I said it's about two hours to sunset. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of sort of crossover between a little bit of colour and maybe those waves coming in just that little bit more just to offer a little bit of interest in the foreground. But given the fact that the, the tide is still quite a bit out, that affords me two opportunities. Number one, to maybe get out onto the rocks and actually shoot a little bit sort of out here where the waves are sort of gathering. And, and two, because my sort of, I am two hours away from sunset, I'm gonna have a, a good mooch around first of all and see whether there's anything sort of that uh, catches my eye, apart from maybe some of the obvious scenes that I've maybe scouted out before. So let's first of all go for a little bit of a dander and we'll see what we can see. So we've got a lovely little bit of light coming through now. now sort of the, the angle of the sun this time of year. We won't have that direct sunlight for, for long, so what we'll be hoping for is actually some reflected light. But for now, that's why I've sort of risen myself up a little bit, raising myself up. It's just the, the lovely colour on these rocks here. Just love how it kind of just illuminates that, that low angle of, of, of the sun. Playing about a bit with um, just how the sort of waves are sort of, sort of washing in around the rocks. It's not a huge swell, but every sort of few sets you get a bigger wave. And then what I think sort of helps to anchor the image a little bit and maybe not let your eye completely drift off the frame is leaving that top rocking, um, which again is, is giving some of that nice light. Now you heard me talking about the scaries last time we were out. That's the scaries over here. And we actually have some sort of sea mist going about and it's actually creating a really nice atmosphere out there. So I may be able to start using those in a moment as well. But for now I think I'll carry on sort of looking at this little area here because this is what's picking up the sun and we've got to make the most of that before it disappears behind actually behind some buildings. This first image ultimately I don't think works. A couple of reasons behind that. Firstly this is actually a crop. This wave kind of flows on out past the screen here and it was quite overexposed. Um, so cropping in to get rid of a lot of that um, has got me very tight to the rock here. Um, so I think that kind of is ultimately one of the failings. Um, secondly, this sort of area here, just a little bit of white nothingness going on, no real texture being held. Um, perhaps an overexposed area here as well. I do like how the waves are flowing over this particular rock and this particular rock, but I think that really this is just a, a nothing image really. Kind of insight so these are just a selection of some of the images that i took there and again just to show the difference that the timing can make you can see that here for example there's just no waves coming over the rock whatsoever versus perhaps these two where there's a lot of waves coming over the over the rock um so again just that sort of whole aspect of timing when you're at the coast and um of course paying attention to what's going on across the whole frame because while my your eye is perhaps drawn here and here you're still paying attention to what's going on in the background. Not a lot going on here, maybe a little bit too much going on here. So just a little bit of comparison on this particular subject. Um, these images taken, what, 17 seconds apart. And you can see the difference that light is actually making. So in this first one, we, we still have a little bit of that um, direct sunlight on this foreground rock. 
and obviously on the, the two rocks here. But if you look here, say 17 seconds later, and you can already perhaps see it starting to disappear from the bottom of this rock, and but definitely from this rock here. So even just little subtle changes like that, uh, it's good to be aware of when you're out in the in in the field. Right, back to the video. So still up in the same position, but what I've done now is uh, the light, even though it's quite subdued, the mist is kind of just making sort of wide vista shots not really possible at the moment so what i've done is i've narrowed my view even more now i've got the 18 to 135 and i'm right out at 135 now and just again it's my eye drawn to the reflection of the light against the rock and actually secondary what my eye was drawn to just in behind that rock the way the waves were flowing and again that's a useful thing just to bear in mind you know just setting your camera up and simply just shoot 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 with all the waves actually have a look and see where those waves are flowing and what potentially is going to make some interesting patterns and I really do like just kind of now just how that, that wave is just sort of flowing over the top of the, um, the stone so playing a little bit about, playing a little bit about with that there's still some of that nice direct light on those stones and I think it's going to go any minute now so again, just an example of some of the sort of images and crop choices that I made standing in this particular area. As I said, it was this little, obviously the light against the rock, but it was actually this little area of waves that was sort of really drawing my eye to it. But I just couldn't quite get it to work. Um, you can see here that I tried a, a 16 by 9 crop just to have that rock. Um, it just, I liked how this was flowing, but again, just as it was kind of splashing back on itself, it was just creating just, I think, a bit of a, a, a distraction. I think what possibly came closest uh, was maybe a vertical uh, composition, um, just allowing myself to sort of see the, um, the sort of two rocks sort of leading up to the, to the main rock. Um, so that's kind of what I think I sort of settled on. Um, but again, it's, mm, I'm sort of 50-50 whether it works or not, but I'll, Throw that, throw that up now and then we'll get on with the rest of the video. So we're still in the same spot and that's probably something that you'll get used to if you follow my YouTube channel. I don't like to move around and jump around too much. So again, while there is some beautiful light on the scaries, we're not getting a huge amount in large parts of the foreground. So I'm still just working on these little abstract images. And now what I'm doing is working again on this just little crop of rocks um, and seeing how the sort of waves flow through. Now again, with the using a polarizer and a four-stop NZ, um, it is just all about timing. And again, as I've said before, you know, your choice, whether you like it really sort of flowing over the rocks, whether you want it really, really sort of super smooth, or whether you want to sort of leave a little bit of the, the texture in the image. Now for me personally, I'm looking to leave a little bit of that rock showing because of course it is still picking up some reflected light. It is really about that timing aspect. But a one and a half second seems to be getting me close to it, but if I were to shoot now, it's probably a little bit too many waves. And if I were to shoot now, it's probably not enough. So it's somewhere in between. Again, if I were to shoot here, just too much. So I'm probably looking to shoot about now. Yeah, one and a half seconds because you do want a little bit of that movement in the water over the top of the rocks but you want those rocks to sort of shine through and for that to happen you want them not to be covered uh, by the water for at least a portion of that image so thank goodness for digital and we're not firing off film every time so now the other thing that you could potentially do if you're getting frustrated with getting all of the right elements looking good in the same frame um, you could actually take multiple images and then back in post using something like photoshop and layers paint in the most appropriate parts of the image. Now, of course, you've got to be careful there that you don't make it look sort of completely false, but there is the opportunity maybe to paint in some more interest from a different frame over um, a secondary frame. So I may even give that a go. And again, just another example of some of the different images that can be produced from the same spot based upon the timing of the waves. There was a couple of things that I was kind of looking for. Um, I really wanted, obviously, some nice color on these foreground rocks. So I didn't want them covered. I didn't want, I didn't want the foreground rocks covered as here and here. Um, I was also very keen to see what shapes I could see 
on this background rock you can see even in some of them the background rock completely disappears I definitely wanted that background rock in there but I didn't want it too bold in the frame I kind of wanted something flowing around so from this sort of uh, selection I was then able to narrow something down to what I thought perhaps worked in this particular instance. Right, look at that, I've actually moved position. So I've come down now to the shore where the tide's actually coming in now. High tide isn't for another two hours. And as I said, it's compared to this time last week, it's actually a relatively low high tide. Low high tide? I've got the camera set up in the vertical composition. And again, kind of using a little bit of both sides of the stone to kind of guide the eye through. But actually what's really going to guide the eye through is one of those larger sets of waves. Now, I'm going to say it's probably not going to work this evening. Um, we are actually starting to lose, I'm not sure we can make that out, but we're really starting to lose any light over on the skerries. Um, so there must be a sort of thicker bank of cloud on the horizon. It's about half an hour to the sunset now. Uh, it might still pop, of course. And we do have some nice textured clouds above us. So if anything is going to catch, you know, it'd be lovely where, where the clouds are at the moment. I'm just going to play a little bit about with the composition in the hope that we do get some light and if we don't, we, we, we don't. You know what? It's not too bad. It's subtle. Um, a couple of parts of the image that I, I really like, obviously watching how the, the waves are kind of playing around in the, in the centre and again if you can just sort of watch those waves you can sort of have an idea of the sort of patterns they're going to make. There was actually a, another part of the image that I really like. Let me show you. So it's actually just here in the foreground. I'm not sure whether you can see that there. I'll put a little image up off the stones. And just as those stones are, as, as, as the water's kind of just finally sort of slipping away over those stones, they're actually given a really lovely sort of silvery, steely sort of look to them. So, so actually, here comes a reasonable way of now. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So I'm just going to let that flow in, flow in, flow in. And I'm going to shoot now. And I'm going to take another one. Probably that first one's probably going to be the, the one out of those two, but I'll take a quick look. Yeah, so that's, that's quite nice. Just a, a nice image, I guess. Um, nothing but majorly right home about, but yeah, there's just a little bit of sort of subtle light. And actually, there's, there's a couple of sort of brighter spots on those rocks again, that again, it's just giving that sort of silvery sort of you know, even though we're not you know, post-sunset yet, just give it almost that sort of post-sunset bluey, steely, purpley colour. Here comes another potential wave, so we'll watch this one go. So that one decided to knock my tripod, so back to square one, trying to figure out the composition again. Well, you probably guessed it, but I think that's the light gone. Didn't really, as I thought, it didn't really sort of happen down here. And there was some nice, sort of, as I said, some silvery sort of blue tones, but um, but as luck would have it, and again, one of the benefits of shooting local, I was here last week, and we did actually get some lovely purples and pinks in the sky, and I'll actually throw up a couple of those images as, as well. So, sunset is in about 10 minutes. Pretty sure nothing's really going on. There's a little bit of color, especially over to the west. Now I'm gonna be sort of walking that way. Um, if it just so happens that there's anything to be shot on the way back, maybe I'll break out the camera again, but, don't think that's going to happen so once again thanks a lot for following along and for watching another photo fridays um i'm off to have fish and chips tonight Woo! oh and by the way look new jacket instagram oh, so that'll be a no then a little bit misty out there anyway guys once again thanks for watching we'll catch up again next week bye bye chips. So again, this is the image, um, and I think it works reasonably well. Um, the light perhaps not as nice as I would have liked it, um, but as I said, I really like how that sort of outflow of tide is just creating this sort of silvery, sort of misty effect over the tops of those stones. And then of course we still have just a little touch of light on, on these rocks. 
The other thing that I quite like is, um, and I, I must admit I didn't notice this in the field only when I came back, there's, there's almost a, a little sort of bank of clouds here that's perhaps mim mimicking the, um, the, the scaries in the, in the distance. Um, yeah, so it's a reasonably pleasing image. I quite like the, the composition. I quite like how there is a little bit of separation between this rock and the scaries and how this rock, this foreground rock, sort of dips down to reveal this one. Um, in an ideal world, I would perhaps have a little bit more separation in here and that's perhaps something to go back and work on. But ultimately, a reasonably pleasing image, I guess. Just as a little side note, just an example of how white balance can kind of affect the mood of an image. Um, so this is how that image was shot in, in camera. And then of course, just in post-processing, because I shot it as a raw file, um, this is just some of the settings that you can apply in Lightroom Auto, Daylight, Cloudy, and, and Shade. And that can sometimes help you get closer to the mood that you're looking to achieve. Anyway guys, so I will leave you with one final image, and that is the image actually that I shot last week where I think that the light actually worked uh, much better. I still think there's some work to be done on the composition, but again, shooting local means that of course I can head on up there at short notice and try again. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch up again next week. Bye-bye.